In this video, we're going to be discussing the common types of shoulder dislocation. Typically, AP views and Y views are performed as standard in most centers. Axial views are also sometimes performed. On an AP view, what you're looking for in regards to the glenohumeral joint is correct alignment of the glenoid with the humeral head. The Y view is a lateral view in which you see the Y shape of the scapula. Anteriorly, you see the coracoid. Posteriorly, you have the acromion. And here, you have the scapular body. Normally, you should see the humeral head lying directly on top of this Y shape. Lastly, the axial view, you should see the normal congruency of the glenoid and the humeral head. There's three types of shoulder dislocation, anterior, posterior, and least commonly inferior, also known as luxatio erecta. Anterior shoulder dislocations are by far the most common type. The arm is in an external rotation and there's forceful abduction. On an AP film, you'll see the humeral head lies below the caracoid, medial and inferior to the glenoid. When you see an anterior dislocation, make sure you look for a Bankhart lesion and a Hillsax lesion. Here on the left is the normal alignment of the shoulder joint. On the right here, this is what an anterior dislocation looks like. So the humeral head has moved inferiorly and should lie under the coracoid, which will lie in this position. There will now be a defect in the posterolateral humeral head, and this is in keeping with a Hillsax lesion or defect. And corresponding to this, in the antero-inferior labrum, you'll get some injury there as well. And that can either be soft tissue or bony, and that's a bank heart lesion. Posterior dislocations are far less common. They usually occur in accidents such as electric shocks or with seizures. On an AP film, you'll see what is called the light bulb appearance. You can also get overlapping of the glenoid and the humeral head. Specific complications to look out for with a posterior dislocation are reverse bank heart and reverse hill sacs lesions. In this diagram, which is a schematic diagram of an axial slice through a posteriorly dislocated shoulder, you can see that the glenoid here is impacting into the anteromedial aspect of the humeral head and resulting in an impaction fracture here. And this is a reverse Hillsax lesion. Corresponding to this in the posterior labrum, you'll get some injury and that is the reverse bank heart lesion. Inferior dislocations are by far the least common. Interestingly, the patient will present with their arm in fixed abduction. So pointing up, usually their hand is resting on their head. On the x-ray, you'll see the humeral head is inferiorly displaced and medial to the glenoid. There's a very high complication rate of soft tissue and bony injuries with this type of dislocation. On this first case, you can see that the humeral head is not congruent with the glenoid. Instead, it has moved inferiorly under the coracoid here, and this is in keeping with an anterior dislocation. Looking at the Y view, you can see that the humeral head is not overlying the Y shape of the scapula. It has been displaced and dislocated anteriorly. This is another example of an anterior dislocation. You can see how a hill sac defect may occur as well as a bony bank heart or soft tissue bank heart. Looking at this x-ray, there's no dislocation at present as the humeral head is nicely congruent with the glenoid. However, if you look a bit closely, you can see that there is a bony fragment there and a bony fragment here. And so this inferior to the glenoid is a bony bank heart lesion. And this posterolateral in the humeral head is in keeping with a hill sax lesion. So this patient must have had a previous anterior dislocation, which have caused these injuries. Here is another example of a bony bank heart. Moving on to this case, you can see that the humeral head has a slightly 
strange morphology and looking at it closely it looks like a light bulb. This is in keeping with the light bulb sign of a posterior dislocation and on the modified view you can see that there's overlapping of the glenoid and the humeral head and this is again uh, suggesting a po posterior dislocation. This is another case of posterior dislocation. Again, you can see that the glenoid is not completely congruent with the humeral head. And again, the humeral head has a light bulb appearance. This is the last case. So on the right here, we have an AP film. And on the left, we have an axial film. You can see that the patient has presented with their arm abducted and the humeral head has moved inferiorly in relation to the glenoid. This is in keeping with luxatio erecta. On the axial film, you can see that the glenoid is not at all congruent with the humeral head. So we've covered the main types of shoulder dislocation and hopefully you found this video helpful.